All right, guys, welcome to this lecture on premature junctional contractions. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to throw them in the comment section. If you like it, give it a like and subscribe if you want some more. So let's jump into it. So normal conduction, we know we have our SA node, fires off, depolarizes the atria. I would depict that on our EKG as a P wave. We then know our AV node is going to harness that signal. And it's going to delay it for a second and then send it down through our Hisperkinji system down into the ventricles. And it's going to create our QRS, which is going to look a nice narrow QRS. And then we've got our T wave for repolarization. And so that's our normal conduction system. And we know that all of the cells of the heart have their own pacemaker potentials. And sometimes, Certain cells at certain certain areas of the heart can fire off prematurely. And a premature junctional contraction is when that occurs at the AV junction. All right, so this is the junction. And if this fires off premature, what would we expect to see? So this cell fires, it sends depolarization. Well, because it's within our Hisperkinji system, it's actually going to send a depolarization signal down the Hisperkinji fibers, just like it does in our normal beat. And we're going to create a QRS complex that's going to look exactly like our normal QRS with a normal T wave. The difference will be is that before it, there is, if you notice, no P wave. Why is that? Well, because this junctional beat caused a QRS in the absence of atrial depolarization. So we would define a premature junctional contraction as a QRS that is the same morphology, QRS. Obviously, it needs to occur premature or early compared to when it, a normal B would. And there needs to be an absence of atrial, atrial um, activity that is going to actually be the causative, um, you know, the, the reason why this QRS will occur. And so on an EKG, this is a rhythm strip here. I'm going to walk you through. So we can see just that. We've got normal beat, normal beat, normal beat, normal beat early. So this is a premature beat. And then we resume normal, normal, early, or premature, then normal again. If you look at our, our normal beats, we've got our P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, P, QRS, and then we have an, a QRS that looks very similar to our normal QRSs, but if I look in front of it, if I look in front of it, I don't see, there's no P wave. And then we have a little bit of a pause, then we resume our normal P waves, normal P waves, and then another premature beat with, you said it, no P wave. And so notice that these are still nice, narrow. These premature beats are narrow complex. They're very similar in morphology to our normal QRSs. There's no P waves. And so because of the morphology of the QRS, the fact that they're premature, you can say that, and there's, there's no atrial activity driving this, that these are premature junctional contractions. Right. Something interesting I just want to note, um, very rarely, you can actually see a retrograde P wave. So sometimes, um, this is just kind of a cool fact, is when this junction fires off, it's going to fire off. Well, it's going to cause depolarization down the Hisperkinji fibers, like we said. But sometimes it'll also cause retrograde depolarization up the AV node, and you actually get a retrograde P wave through the atrium. It's actually really cool. And depending on if 
say this is the AV node here, if that junctional contraction occurs here, you'll have ventricular depolarization first, and then you'll have retrograde depolarization after. Or if that junctional contraction occurs kind of up top on the where the AV node is, it might cause a retrograde P wave right before you see ventricular depolarization. So sometimes you can actually see a, a junctional contraction that'll have maybe a little P wave right before the QRS. Or you might have a P wave that occurs right after the QRS where you have this little P wave. Those are still premature junctional contractions. I just thought it was really interesting that you might see these little atrial deflections before or after these junctional contractions. But obviously, we know that these PR intervals are not showing that these are beats that are coming through the AV node normally. So this is obviously still arising from the junction. So just a fun fact. I hope this helps you understand the physiology behind the junctional contraction and helps you identify them on an EKG. So take care.